once you introduce enough people to enough dogs, you eventually develop a uh, don't do that reflexes. Some individuals develop really healthy don't do that reflexes, and other individuals kind of sandwich theirs between hand slapping and guttural panic noises. This video is largely a compilation of things that trigger my don't do that reflex. There's a tendency to greet shelter dogs with an assumption of how they want to be greeted based on past experiences with relaxed dogs in a home environment. Something very important to remember about shelter dogs though is that they are on average two to three times more stressed than dogs living at home, and many are even more stressed than that. The absolute, hands down, best, 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 best thing you can do to have comfortable and successful interactions with all dogs, but especially shelter dogs, is to familiarize yourself with dog body language and how they may be interpreting your own. But that video is for another time because today we're just going to talk about the straight do's and don'ts of meeting a dog at the animal shelter. Do sit on a chair or a bench. It'll make yourself smaller and therefore less intimidating to them without putting you directly at their eye line. Do not put your face in their face. We all want to do it. We all want to do it. We shouldn't do it. It's just too intimate to start off with for most dogs. Do angle your body slightly away from them instead of facing them head on. This is another way to make you less intimidating. Do not hold extended direct eye contact with them. This can be perceived as very threatening and scary. It is very different when you already know and have a positive relationship with a dog. It's a red zone with new dogs though. Do leave a hand out for them to smell. And I say leave a hand out instead of reach a hand out because leaving your hand out is less intimidating than having a stranger reach directly at you. Do not reach or bend over their head. They don't know you and they can't see what's happening up here. Don't do it. Do follow their lead. Unless staff has instructed you otherwise, if the dog is asking you to pet them, go for it. If they're really headbutting you in the leg and wiggling at you, go ahead and get in there. And if they're hesitantly grazing your leg, maybe lightly sweep your hand against their side. Do not crowd them. This could look like a lot of things, including, but not limited to, hugging them or backing them into a corner. They should always feel like they have the option of an easy escape. Do let them approach you not the other way around. It's very normal for a dog to enter a play yard with an interested party and then spend the next 10 minutes smelling the yard and ignoring them. It's not personal. Dogs just see the world through their nose and they're going from being cooped up in a kennel to a yard exploding with smells. Let them smell. They'll wrap it up eventually. It doesn't mean they don't want to interact with you. Do not make quick movements or loud noises. Those loud noises can definitely include your speaking voice. A stressed, scared, or anxious dog is much quicker to startle than a relaxed one. Do speak softly. There is no shame in the baby voice game. Do not force them to interact with you in any way. This could look like reeling them in on a leash or following them around the yard and touching them. If they want to interact with you, they'll do it. There are ways to coax out a willing interaction, but it should never be forced. It'll be hard, but keep those initial pets short. They still need to know that it's their choice to be engaging. So pet them, remove your hands, and then let them decide to re-engage with you or not. Most will be like, yes, let's go, come on. But in doing this, you're letting them know this interaction is dictated by what they want, so they'll feel naturally more comfortable with you. In keeping these initial pets short, you are also avoiding overstimulating them, which is very easy to do with a stressed dog. Overstimulation could look like an extended pet session turning a wiggly dog into a really, really jumpy mouthy dog. Do offer treats or toys depending on what motivates them. You could leave a treat in your hand for them to explore or toss it gently toward them if they're not approaching. If they're into basic obedience, maybe ask for a sit and then offer it. If they like toys, throwing the ball can be a really fun first interaction for them. Think of these as like first date tips. You don't know each other, so you're just trying to make a really good first impression and prove to them that you're not an axe murderer, or worse, someone that calls people on the phone to have casual conversations. And just like people in your own life, the more you get to know each other, the less they'll be scared off when you loosen the reins on things like maintaining eye contact or farting on the couch. So good luck out there and go meet your new best friend.